people will snack Ray. They'll snack when they're not even hungry. For reasons they can't even fathom. They'll turn up the store's driveway, not knowing for sure why they're doing it. They'll arrive at the doors, as innocent as children, longing for the snacks. Of course, we don't mind if you look around, they'll say. It's only a few dollars per snack. They'll pass over the money, without even thinking about it. For it is money they have, and Reese's pieces they lack. And they'll walk to their couch and sit alone with a bag of potato chips. They'll find they've gained five pounds somewhere along one of the waistlines, where they ate their cookies and devoured their marshmallows. And they'll eat those snacks and it'll be as if they dipped themselves in chocolate fudge. The shakes will be so thick, they'll have to eat them with a spoon. The one constant through all the years, Ray, has been snacking. America has rolled by like an army of fruit roll-ups. It's been tossed aside like leftover pizza, reheated and eaten again. But snacking has marked the time. These snacks, the shame. It's a part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once tasted good and could again. Oh, people will snack, Ray. People will most definitely snack. If you try that, they will come. Play ball! You tried that MLB edition. I'm Nick Novak with my pals Chad Hancock. Batter up! Nick Geiger. Balls and strikes. <laughs> <laughs> well done. So we're, yeah. we're here to uh, try out some baseball-themed snacks today, and I am a huge baseball fan, so I'm looking forward to the episode. I'm kind of the baseball guy. Geiger, you are the football guy. And Hancock, you are the Oreo championship guy. <laughs> I thought you were going to say I'm the Nintendo guy. <laughs> That's, true. That's true, too. I treat Mario Kart like a sport. Do you guys play any uh, video baseball games ever? The best one, for sure, for baseball was uh, Baseball Stars, I think, for the for the old NES. Did you guys ever play that one? Yes, it was great. It was The thing that was so good about Baseball Stars is it kept the stats for you. It was yes. sort of the first game that kept stats. I got so obsessive about like where I needed to have... And you could make your own players. So I would have my own player that was Chad, and he needed to bat a 1,000. Like and if he and if he got like one out, I'd be like, nope, starting the season over. <laughs> wow, it was the so opposite miserable. of real Chad who batted zero. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I needed to make up for my real life inefficiencies through the video world. Did you, baseball Simulator was also, I thought, a really unique game. It was the one where you could throw like fireball pitch or three balls at once. It was a pretty good Nintendo game too. I didn't really play much. I played the Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, game for the N64 a bunch. And it's most no. I was terrible at it. I didn't even win that much, but it was notable for constantly having a theme song lodged in my head of "Call, call, call me Junior." It made no sense. <laughs> it had nothing to do with baseball. I'm not going to talk to Ken Griffey Junior. I don't know why I need to know what to call him. I think it's fair to say that overall, baseball video games, like baseball, is one of the worst sports when it comes to translating it to a video game. I think, especially nowadays, like they've tried to make it so complicated with like all the different pitches and stuff like that. It's just a slog to get through. Yeah, the the great great thing about the early games like RBI baseball was you you pushed A, you swung and it hit, you know. <laughs> right. Nobody wants to sit and watch like a 10 pitch at bat in a video game. That's actually a problem with most sports video games. Like I used to play a lot of Madden and I liked it a lot. And now it's just gotten to the point where, and it may be just I don't play as much, but now I got the newer one like last year and I threw three picks in like a first quarter. I couldn't I don't know what I'm doing. It's all like, you know, hold the button down and the left stick up if you want to do a catchable pass that allows him to get runs after the catch. It's like, just, where's B? I'm throwing to B. Like, what? And all the best. And I bought the basketball game. I bought like the Jordan version of like 2K16 or something or whatever. It's a couple years old now. And like, again, basketball games used to be pass and shoot. That's really what you had to do. And then maybe like a jump button to block or something. Now it's, Literally, I'm reading through the – I did the tutorial, and it was like, swivel the right stick 
three quarters of the way <laughs> while double pumping the left trigger to do a euro step. I'm like, what? The fucking euro step? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, all my guys are just spasming and throwing the ball up in the air, which, to be fair, is a pretty good approximation of me playing basketball. <laughs> right. It, so, so- it sounds like they're nailing reality for you, throwing picks and spasming yeah, the basketball. Not understanding what I'm <laughs> <laughs> the pinnacle of, of video basketball is NBA Jam. For sure, oh, yeah. NBA Jam. Yeah, it's the pinnacle of basketball is NBA Jam. The pinnacle of football is Tecmo Bowl, although I'll entertain Super Tecmo Bowl. And then, yeah, with baseball, I think it's baseball stars. And with hockey, I think it's ice hockey, where you pick between fat guy, skinny guy, and medium <laughs> guy. Remember that one? <laughs> yeah, so that was a great game. What, what did you pick? I used to do, like, uh, one fat guy and then all skinny guys, because they were so fast. Like, you have three skinny guys. So just zoom around, but then you have that one fat guy, so that if you need to, you can just, like, knock people over, that sort of thing. Well, uh, Chad, you had a totally unrelated bird story, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now that we're done sounding like complete old men, Everything was better in our day. Real quickly, <laughs> I do appreciate that we started the thing like, play ball, it's the Major League Baseball theme. Hey, what do you guys think about video games? That's <laughs> <laughs> how so athletic we yeah. are. Okay, so I was at lunch the other day at work. I'm sitting outside. They have like some, you know, outdoor patios that you can sit at or whatever. So I'm sitting there with my, uh, with my friend. I was eating some mac and cheese. All of a sudden, this bird flew by and took a shit on my sleeve. Like, it, it hit my arm. So, first of all, I've never been shit on by a bird before. But my, you know, my arm was in such a way where if the bird had gone, like, three inches or whatever, one way and the other, it would have gone right into my food. It made me wonder, I wanted to ask you guys, first of all, have you ever been shit on by a bird before? Second, is there any food where if a bird shit on it, you would kind of, like, clean it off in some way or something and then still continue to eat it all right let's take the second question first (laughs) get this out of the way (laughs) like if it was a soup or something obviously not right but like if it was a burger you could presumably maybe just take the top bun off and then continue to eat it like open face sandwich or something no uh i wouldn't consider that food then if they if the bird shit on the top of the burger and i took the bun off I would think of that as not eating <laughs> the bird shit food. Or if you had, if you had like a plate full of fries, you know, would you just like move those fries off and then eat the other fries, or are all the fries tainted? I, I actually don't think there's any circumstance where I eat the food. Right. Like even if it's on the burger bun, like anything, there's no way I would eat any. No matter how much I paid for it, where I was, <laughs> I would throw the food out. And the, I don't even think I really have to think about that question. <laughs> if I was sitting at a fancy steakhouse with an open-air patio with no umbrellas, and a bird shat on my $50 ribeye, no, I would never eat that in a million years, no matter what it was. And yes, I have been shat on by a bird. It hit my leg. It wasn't all that exciting. I just washed it off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we actually were on uh, Alcatraz, out on Alcatraz, like waiting for the boat to come back to take us back to shore with my wife, and we were just standing there, and a bird shit like right on her like head and face, and it was one of the, oh, <laughs> one of the greatest moments of my life. <laughs> <laughs> what did she do? It took it pretty well. Yeah, I mean, it was clearly disgusted, but, I mean, what can you do? You're also surrounded by a bunch of people, which doesn't make it any better. But it was, uh, I personally have never happened, and now that I'm saying that, it's probably going to get shit out of my bird tomorrow. <laughs> All right. My sister, a bee flew into her mouth and stung her tongue. But it has nothing to do with birds, I guess. <laughs> Close enough. She was drinking a can of soda, and the bee flew in there, and she didn't know. And she turned back and drank it, and it flew out and stung her in the uh, tongue. She ran in just the house, just screaming. But my mom couldn't understand what happened because her tongue had swollen up. She was just like, <laughs> like over and over and over. She couldn't hear anything. <laughs> Not that it was funny, uh, if you're listening, my sister. But uh, it was kind of funny. All right. Well, now we got that settled. <laughs> you guys won't eat bird shit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, speaking of my wife, we went to KFC. We walked in the restaurant, and there's nobody there. It's 100% empty, not a single person it's around lunchtime, though. So we order our food, we go sit at the tables with our kids. I'm waiting for the food. She's already sitting at the first available table. Now, this table 
has a booth on one side and chairs on the other and has the handicap sticker on it because with the non-booth side for a handicap person to pull up and sit at the table. I see. So there are three of those tables in a row. Yes. So this, I don't know, speaks to Wisconsin and a lot of people. Oh. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> He's just saying Wisconsin's per capita rascal purchase is very high. <laughs> Look, the booze might be a little wider, but other than that, we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> so I say let's move over here because that's a handicap table. She looks around and sort of wonders why because there's nobody in the entire restaurant. And there's also two other handicap tables, but they're both a table further down from the front of the restaurant. Sure. So I'm like, no, let's just, let's move. So we move over. And of course, five minutes later, in strolls somebody in a wheelchair. (laughs) She's praying that this person in a wheelchair takes the furthest handicap table. And I'm praying they take the first one because (laughs) just to show her up. (laughs) In the similar situation, what would you, before I uh, give you actually what happened, what would you guys feel bad about taking that table or would you not think twice about it? You're talking to a guy who will happily shit in the handicap stall whenever he can for the extra space what do you need space for space for what you doing work in there got a man spread when you're taking that shit man (laughs) okay that's not a word (laughs) Uh, i would never sit in a handicap uh booth or i mean i've sat in the one the stall at work if we don't really have any handicap at work i don't think so it's just there for show (laughs) also did you say the handicap person strolled in (laughs) <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not what they happened. They actually rolled in. <laughs> you want me to say rolled in? Just... <laughs> yes. Hey, he's man spreading in the bathroom, so that guy can't take a dump. <laughs> so clearly, I'm the the nicest person here. No, I, I I actually would not have taken it to begin with because I would want the two sided booth. So that's why I wouldn't have taken. it. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's why. Because the booth is inferior. That's why. No, I would not have sat in that either. I would have felt that. So, of course, we're watching him intently, and <laughs> he goes to the first table, the one I had us move from. And damn, if I didn't celebrate, <laughs> I wanted to go <laughs> high five this guy. <laughs> You like ran up to him and you're like, thank you for losing your legs so many years ago so I could show up my wife. <laughs> well, it's the thing of like, I think I'd even feel bad, even if there's two other ones. I'd just feel like as he rolled by me on the wheelchair, just glaring at me, I'd feel terrible. So you'd have to pretend to be disabled then. <laughs> yeah, that's the way. Right? <laughs> yeah, how would you pretend to be disabled? What disability <laughs> are you claiming, Gagger? <laughs> oh, my armor or something? <laughs> <laughs> you just put on shades and like yeah. start like pretend you're blind like you grab like the cup and start eating it or something hey. i can't tell is this my chicken right you're blind and or have never eaten food before <laughs> uh, you're newly blind just well, within I, would, the hour. I would get up to like like i'd have betsy say like can i have more ketchup and then i'd get up and limp really badly over to something <laughs> to make it look like i was a cripple but I can still walk. It's not a disability. <laughs> Limpy. <laughs> no, like a permanent limp. That's so bad. Like, you'd want me to have the closest seat to the door. I wouldn't have to keep walking. Your limp is just going to look like you slept weird last night or something. It's not going to be convincing at all. You are You know what? You guys are right. I look... It's so clear that I'm a perfect physical specimen. No one would buy it. <laughs> right. I don't even take front spots at like grocery stores and stuff like if there's a front spot open i feel bad just taking that spot you mean even if it's a non-handicapped spot even in a non-handicapped because i know some buddy who's less mobile needs that thing more than me and i'll walk the extra 10 feet yeah i won't do that i I will say like on the train there's a little a row of seats that are meant for like older people or people that can't walk as far i'll leave that open and i won't across them i'll lay across (laughs) them and if they get out if they like question me i'll say hold on and I'll just start limping back across the train. <laughs> like, see? Uh, just limping all over. <laughs> constantly limping. Uh, uh, Time for my patented limp. <laughs> handicap situation. Like, are you trying to do a pimp walk? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm limping. I'm trying to do a limp walk. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there is no bigger asshole on the earth than when, like, there's a crowded train in the morning and people can't sit down and someone, like, won't move their bag off the seat. 
you know, their suitcase or their purse has to have a seat, and you can't. Like, I get so irritated at those people. Yeah, especially when you limped up to them. <laughs> I limped up to have the seat. Showed them how badly my life has been damaged by my crippling limp. <laughs> I won't even take the purse off. I'll say, like, oh, is there Tylenol in there? My leg really hurts. <laughs> that's all. Well, that, uh, that all transitions nicely into <laughs> baseball snacks. <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh, trying out some big league baseball snacks. Now we we planned this because the Major League Baseball All Star Game is coming up in a few days here of this episode. So we've got some snacks that are can be regularly found at the ballpark, and we're going to start with the most basic one, and that is the peanut. So we have a bag of Hampton Farms salted roasted peanuts. And in addition to having a bag of peanuts, we also have a five-point rating system. <laughs> <laughs> Starting at the top, love that, like that, indifferent to that, dislike that, and hate that. And we'll uh, see how these peanuts hold up. I mean, this is just waiting to see if Ham- Hampton Farms can mess up <laughs> a shell <laughs> peanut. Do you guys I like don't... peanuts at the ball game? We talked about this briefly in a previous episode. I still don't remember. I do like peanuts. Well, yeah, we talked about it when we were doing uh, sunflower seeds. And to me, they right. they kind of run into some of the same issues that we run into with sunflower seeds, which is just it's so messy to eat. But at least with peanuts, like I like the flavor a lot more. So. And as I said before, I have eaten peanut shells before. Have you guys ever tried a peanut shell? I've tried them, but that was enough for me to not eat them. Right. So, I mean, this is a, a shelled peanut. <laughs> well, it's a peanut. <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know, like, they say they're salted, but, like, I barely taste any salt. You know it's all what? on the shell. I, I agree. Yeah. There is, they taste much less salty than a peanut I get somewhere else. I don't know why. I've also got a these lot that are pretty, just empty shells. I feel like these are pretty clean breaking peanuts. Yeah, I'm having no problems opening them, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> really stretching for things to talk about these people. <laughs> well, um, mine are pretty brown. How about yours? <laughs> Shirt is open. <laughs> the, peanut... <laughs> the peanut always has that, like, so within the shell, there's always that sort of coating on the outside of it, that, like, uh, flaky coating. Yeah, that annoys me. Do you like that part? No. The skin? The peanut? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, don't I like it. The whole thing in my mouth. I don't Hard know. pass on the skin. What's wrong with it? I don't know. It kind of grosses me out. <laughs> and it just like flakes <laughs> off and then it gets like everywhere. <laughs> kind of grosses me out. So it's the guy who would eat his meal covered in bird shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, see, this is a perfect food. If a bird shit on this peanut, you could just crack open the shell and eat away. Like, I guess I would be with you on that. Oh, you just agreed to eat a bird shit peanut. Uh oh! Wait, go. to eat the bird shit peanut, you need to still. You're gonna have to handle the bird shit in order to crack the peanut. Excellent point. And there's also cracks in the bird in the shell, so the bird would seep through. Yeah. I just got a three nut peanut. Ooh, the bonus. All right, so we're eating peanuts, Gagger. <laughs> How do you feel about the Hamptons Hampton Farms variety? I mean, tastes like every other peanut I've had. I, I, it's, it's fine. I mean, I like peanuts. I don't love the process of shelling the peanut. I feel like your hand gets all cruddy and makes a mess. I don't really find peanuts to be a convenient snack, but I like the taste of one. I would just prefer to buy it unshelled. But if you just handed me a planter's jar of peanuts, that'd be fine for me. It tastes the same and without all the work. But, I mean, this peanut's fine. Hampton Farms successfully picked up a peanut <laughs> and put it in a bag. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well i mean they did salt the shell you can tell if you look at the shells there's some salt on it for sure it's like is it salt. a real is this a real farm that grows these peanuts one would assume for, for, for generations our families and our farmers have nurtured our crops with care and attention from seed to shell so i think they are growing their own peanuts to me this is the definition of an indifferent to that snack peanuts are fine all right, Chad, what do you think? Can one of you explain to me what is the point of putting the salt on the shell? Because at least with the sunflower seeds, you guys were like, oh, well, you put the seed in your mouth and you suck the salt off or whatever. You suck the ranch or whatever it was. But this, I'm not putting the shell in my mouth to get any of the salt. So I don't understand why. That's a good point. Best I can think of is you handle the shells, then you handle the peanut, and maybe there's some salt transfer there. Mm. All right. So I like peanuts a lot, obviously, but I don't want to do the work. I want other people to do the work for me. 
So I want them to become pre-shelled. I want the seasoning on the peanut itself if it's going to be there. Or ideally, just deliver me the peanut in a butter form inside of a chocolate cup. <laughs> so this is going to get a dislike that for me, even though I, the flavor's okay, but they're just a little too bland. Wow. This guy dislikes a peanut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really surprised I'm indifferent in a dislike here about it's whatever. It's just a peanut. It's too much work. <laughs> I'm a lazy sack of shit. <laughs> what's too much work? What, what's more work? Opening this peanut or driving halfway across the city to get a bag of half-eaten lasagna noodles? <laughs> All right. This is... It just seems weird to even be rating these peanuts. We just picked them because of the baseball episode. I don't know. I don't know how... You, I mean, I like eating peanuts, and this tastes as good as mostly any peanut you're going to get. They're good to eat when you go out to, like, the restaurants that'll have them there. Like, you know, bars will have them sit on the table or something. Or you guys ever been to Five Guys where they have, like, just peanuts sitting out and then the floor is covered in peanut shells or whatever? And I guess maybe I only eat them because they're there. I agree that I'd never get them. Eh, I guess I'll go indifferent. This is a tough one. I was leaning towards like, but I'm going to stick with an indifferent. So the shelled peanut has a couple of two indifferents. And a dislike. I don't think this is anything to say about Hampton Farms with these ratings. It just... Sure. I mean, they grew the best peanut they could, probably. I don't know. I think we're going to... Uh, I guess we probably got to do the gum last, right? Or else we're not going to want to eat anything else. Right. So uh, we're going to do the Cracker Jack. Classic old Cracker Jack, the original style. I actually have never seen Cracker Jack in a variety that's not original. Have you guys seen a... I don't think I've ever had Cracker Jacks before. What? Really? I, I never actually knew what they were for like a really long time. You know, they're part of the seventh inning stretch song or whatever. And I just was like, I don't know what that is. Is that some old-timey 1920s snack that doesn't exist anymore or something? I used to have them with my grandma all the time. My grandma would have them for us, so like in little boxes they came in. And then you finish it, and there'd be a prize in the box. And the yes. prize was something shitty, like a little piece of paper you turned into a plane or like yes a, it was always terrible like a, yeah. a sticker Either paper or plastic or some crap yeah or so sticker. this is basically caramel corn yeah correct <laughs> there's also there's peanuts like, like caramel coated peanuts in it i don't see any peanuts Geiger, <laughs> I, i'm watching you you're having as hard a time as opening this as i am <laughs> chad and i were just talking before he pre-cut all the bags he's like yeah some of these are hard to open that's right and i'm like oh yeah most of these will be easy I literally was biting it and ended up stabbing it with a pen. I started panicking. I'm like, I'm going to have to make up a rating because I can't open this bag. <laughs> you guys have to fish your prize bag. out so we can figure out. Oh, there actually is a prize in there? I found mine. Oh, yeah. There are peanuts in here, but they're always so hard to find. Like, I was at the bottom. I haven't found a single them. peanut yet, and I've been digging around for this toy. Yeah. Dig in there. Where's the fucking toy? I found it. It's just a square that says blip a surprise. Is that what yes. yours says, Nomi? Like this guy. The blipper must be their prize app. Oh, there it is. That's terrible. Just give the kids a prize. It's a huge bag. Wow. That's a disappointment. Here's your prize. A piece of paper that tells you to download an app. It says lift and peel. Fuck that. No, I got a sticker inside. I got a download thing, then a sticker. You didn't get a sticker? I'm trying to lift and peel. There's no edge to, like, lift it. Yeah, how do you lift and peel this? <laughs> Being foiled by a Cracker Jack prize? This would keep your kids busy for a long time. There we go. I got a sticker of a dog, like the dog that's on the front with the little sailor kid. And then you can download the Blipper app. Oh, wait, your sticker is that thing? Mine's this. Oh. We all got different ones. I got one like this. This is great podcast as we're comparing <laughs> our stickers to each <laughs> other over real? a camera that no one can see. Did you get a peanut, Chad? Yeah, I found one way at the bottom. Yeah, I've so it's an odd sort of mix of things because for especially for a large bag like we have, because the peanuts easily sluice through. Yeah. It's not a good mix. Not like a great snack mix. Probably the little boxes um, were better because it's also I feel like all the peanuts are sitting on the bottom and I'm not gonna dig through this giant bag to get them to one. Cracker Jack has been around forever. It clearly is baseball. There's a lot of baseball kind of advertising on the bag itself. Uh, yeah, I know it. you can definitely still get it at games. Chad, let's start with you. What do you think of the old Cracker Jack as a first-timer? This is pretty good, actually. I don't normally like caramel corn all that much. I mean, it's okay, but as far as caramel corn goes, this is pretty tasty. I don't understand the point of these peanuts. Like you said, you already made this point that they just sort of disappear with the caramel corn. So I'm going to go ahead and give this an indifferent to that. It's pretty good, but it's not it's not something that I would like run out to get any time. All right. I think in terms of caramel corn, it's pretty decent. I always liked the idea as a kid of the prize, whether it be a sticker, a piece of plastic or whatever. 
I still would always look forward to it. So it was a meaningful thing. And in a huge bag like we got, I probably wouldn't buy this, but I could see myself getting the smaller box or getting my kids a smaller box. So I do enjoy the Cracker Jack. I'm going to give it a solid like that. Guy, what do you think about it? It's good. I'm not usually a big caramel ca- car, blah, 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 po- caramel popcorn guy either. But this one, to me, Cracker Jack doesn't taste quite as sweet as a lot of caramel popcorns. I don't know. It's probably not true, but to me, it doesn't taste as sweet. I think that's true. I think that's true. Okay. I think the peanuts could be good if there was something different about them. But like you said, they seem plunked in there. Um, I actually haven't even gotten to one. I don't know <laughs> where they are. The giant bag. But um, this is way too big a serving of Cracker Jack. This is like a family size bag of Cracker Jack. I don't know who's eating yeah. this. Yeah. I think it's good. It's a, it's a like that. I probably wouldn't. In, in all truth, I'm not going to seek it out. But I think my kids would like it. I would steal some of theirs. It's good. And I do remember, I think a lot of it is I have nostalgia for when I was a kid. And like my grandma giving it to us and looking for the prize. Even though it was bad, I was always excited. Like Novak said. So I uh, like that for me. All right. So two likes and indifferent. Cracker Jack in the lead here with uh, one competitor to go. But before we get there, we have a little segment, which we didn't name, but let's call it You Baseball Dad. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to... I've, I've found 10 ballpark foods that are out of the ordinary. So not hot dogs, popcorn, pretzels, that sort of thing, from 10 different stadiums around the league. And we're going to rate them and see which one's the best here, and uh, guess what the other guy's gonna gonna go for. So we're gonna start with the three stadiums that we are most familiar with, because we're near them or like these teams. Uh, we're gonna start with AT and T. That's uh, out by Chad. It's a giant stadium, and it's the crab sandwich. Mm. Now I'll I'll describe what the crab sandwich is. It says it's fresh crab meat stuffed between two slices of buttered authentic Bay Area sourdough. So crab meat stuff between buttered sourdough bread. Does that sound good to you guys? I've actually seen this one around when I've been to Giants games. They're big on the sourdough, like, bread bowls and stuff like that at AT AT&T Park. They actually have pretty good food there. Like, they have really good brats at the park and tasty garlic fries. They're famous for the garlic fries, right? Yeah. Uh, Wrigley Field, close to uh, Geiger 9 Chicago. The dish is called Bow to the Pork, and it combines (laughs) hickory-smoked pulled Mm -hmm. pork with pickled daikon, carrots, and jalapeno relish on a steamed bao bun. Oh. So basically pulled pork with daikon and carrots and jalapeno on it. Does it say it's spicy? doesn't mention. Just I assume with the jalapeno relish, it makes it spicy. And I'm not totally sure what a bao bun is. B-A-O. That's like a Chinese um, uh, bun. It's like a steam. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks. Chinese, uh, uh, I couldn't think uh, how to describe it. It's like a uh, bow bun. No, it's like a small <laughs> round ball that I think they steam them. Yeah, usually. They kind of seem like moist and soft and fluffy and like almost gummy in consistency. And like they often like stuff them with like meat or something like that. There's a place near our office we used to get called Wow Bow that would send us over. Yeah, I'll get them a lot. Like when we go to dim sum, you can get like steamed or baked pork buns, which are chasu bao. It's really good. Do they ever put bao bab in a bao? A bao bab bao? Bao ba da bao ba da bao bao. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bao bab in the bao bun, bruh? <laughs> um, okay, number three is the Miller Park and Wonky Brewer Stadium. This is called the Brat Joe's. It's yeah. a fried wad of cheese, seasoned ground <laughs> beef, crushed Doritos, and sour cream on a six inch toothpick. Wait, <laughs> cheese? What? Walk that back. What is it? A wad of cheese, ground beef, crushed Doritos, and sour cream. How is that anything to do with a brat? <laughs> is it shaped like a brat? I don't know. I thought it was like, so I knew they had something called a bracho. I assumed it was nachos with just like brats on top. Okay. <laughs> that would be That's the logical thing. <laughs> definitely different. <laughs> All right. Next up, we've got Globe Life Park. That's the Texas Rangers Stadium. And it's the Dilly Dog. It's a hot dog stuffed inside of a cord pickle. So the pickle's cored out. They put a hot dog inside of that, and then they deep fry it. Oh, God. What? So it basically looks like a corn dog, but when you bite it open, there's like a pickle in between the dog and corn layer of it. It's bizarre. That sounds disgusting. (laughs) Fifth, we have uh, the Mariner Stadium, Safeco Field, which I guess is well known for like it's being top in the league for 
interesting foods. Yeah, they have they have some crazy hot dog up there that they put like cream cheese on or something like that. The uh, one the site listed was toasted grasshoppers with chili lime seasoning salt. They're actual grasshoppers. That's not a yes. metaphor for something else. Correct. No, it's just it's... flat out toasted grasshoppers. And I guess the article mentioned how they sold really well. Actually, surprisingly, I remember actually. Now you said that I saw like a news article on it, or it was on ESPN or something about how they sold them. Number six, Yankee Stadium tater cakes. Jumbo tater tots with sour cream, cheddar cheese, bacon bits, scallions, all served on a skewer. Mm. It's basically a big old tater tot smothered in sour cream and cheese and bacon. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, that could be a winner. Minute Maid Park in Houston. Barbecue loaded funnel cake. It's pulled pork, chopped beef, smoked sausage, a citrus kale black bean slaw, and a mustardy barbecue sauce all served on top of a funnel cake. Good lord. <laughs> Wait, does the funnel cake the funnel cake doesn't have powdered sugar. It's just like the cake, right? It didn't mention that. I would assume um, not. But it's you know, pork, beef, sausage, slaw, yeah. and barbecue sauce on top of funnel cake. This list is just, hey, let's make a list of why the rest of the world hates us. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Fat Americans. They're so bored, they're wrapping hot dogs in pickles. And then starving kid from another nation strolls in, and you're sitting at the front of the concessions line. And they hand him a bunch of deep-fried grasshoppers. He's like, fuck you, give me some food! Right. Next is the Rocky Mountain Po' Boy at Coors Field. It's deep-fried Rocky Mountain oysters topped with garlic slaw, guacamole, Green Chili Ranch, Pico de Gallo, uh, all in a roll. Wait, that's deep fried bull nuts? Yes, deep fried <laughs> bull testicles with slaw, guac, ranch dressing, Pico de Gallo. Right, because Rocky Mountain oysters are not actually oysters. Right. right. Cool. Okay. So you're all going to be picking that one. <laughs> <laughs> Fenway Park in Boston has the creme brulee French toast. Mm. Fluffy French toast with pastry cream and chocolate ganache plus Vermont maple syrup and Fenway Farm strawberry sauce, all topped with powdered sugar. So basically French toast. I think that's strange <laughs> because it's not something you eat at a baseball game. Right. Right. And last but not least, we have Great American Ballpark in Natty, and that has the Candy Cloud Waffle Cone. It says, why settle for a plain waffle cone when you can have one with cotton candy wrapped around it? This treat, which is filled with soft serve ice cream and topped with sprinkles, is available at Reds Games. So basically, it's ice cream and sprinkles inside of a waffle cone that is wrapped in cotton candy. That'd be a sticky mess. Hmm. Okay, so now we're going to each decide what would be our top three. Yeah, so look them over. Hmm. Take a top three. Ooh. Well, the <laughs> bull testicles are tempting. And... What if I sprinkle the bull nuts with some grasshopper? So Geiger, I think, likes... Bull nuts and grasshoppers. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And a pickle deep fried. Yeah. I don't even want any of those things prepared in any way. Just chop the nuts <laughs> off and hand them to me. I think, Geiger, you would probably go for the brachos just because it had cool ranch Doritos in it. So Chad thinks you got brachos on the list. Geiger, I think... Uh, I think you're going to be... I actually think, as much as you hate to admit it, you might like this pulled pork from Wrigley. That's on the list. Chad, I did the brachos is not. That just sounds so weird. <laughs> My top three would be the crab sandwich, actually. That sounds delicious. I love crab. I love sourdough. I love butter. All of it's good. Two, I actually, I would eat that barbecue funnel cake. All that stuff sounds really tasty. It's all delicious <laughs> stuff with fried dough. Fried dough surrounded by delicious barbecue is fine by me. And then, yeah, three, that pork bow sounded pretty good. If I had to pick a fourth, the brachos, and actually, and I'm not kidding, I wouldn't mind trying the grasshoppers. I think it'd be cool to just try try eating it. I would totally try the grasshoppers, for sure. Yeah. Would you All try right. the bull nuts? Or, I'm sorry, the Rocky Mountain Oysters? <sighs> so, okay, I would, but I would not try them at Coors Field. <laughs> That's a good point. I would try them if they were at, like, some, you know, I was at some, like, fancy restaurant or something like that, and they were like, no, trust me, these things are prepared, you know, exquisitely. Then, okay, fine, I'll try them there. But not with some, like, person who, it's their summer job, and they clearly don't want to be there, and they're just, like, scooping the bull nuts out of a giant vat onto the bun yeah, and handing it to you. carrying a couple white plastic <laughs> buckets full of bull testes into the stadium. Would you go to Oxnard to try them? <laughs> <laughs> Such a dumb joke. <laughs> uh. All right, so what do you guys think I would like? Okay, I think you're going for... 
I think you might like the creme brulee French toast, actually. And I think those tater tots probably made your list as well. The Yankees tater tots. You guys got them. Got two uh, both on the list. Definitely the French toast. I love French toast. It's maybe my top go-to breakfast place. I know some places that have really good French toast that I always go for. And the tater kegs, I think, looked pretty good. And then I actually put the brachos third. Something about the brachos. <laughs> I, I think uh, as much as we want to give the Wisconsin folk a hard time, they know how to put their fatty foods together. So <laughs> yeah. I trust that they will, <laughs> they will do it me, right. When you need a cheat meal, just come across the border and you'll instantly get fat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Chad, uh, uh-huh. Geiger, what do you think Chad's going to like here? Chad is probably the hardest one to peg. He's got taste around the, the globe, but I would say the French toast is probably on your list as well. Mm, because of it being sweet. Not a sweet thing, and I you like breakfast and brunch. and Sure. I'm going to pick the crab sandwich for Chad. Oh, oh for two. So, really? oh. okay, so let me explain. I'm actually not a big French toast guy in general. I usually find it to be a little bit too dry. That was interesting, but if you had said creme brulee waffle or something like that, for sure it would have been on the list. The crab sandwich would also be on the list, but I've actually seen it before, and it just didn't look fantastic to me. Mm -hmm. So for me, the top three, number one, those taters from Yankee Stadium. You know, I love tater tots, I love bacon, love sour cream, love cheese. That sounds like a winner. Number two, I'm going to say that pulled pork bao bun from Wrigley. I think that sounds really good. I like a pulled pork sandwich. I'm interested to see what it's like on a bao bun. And then number three, just to throw a loop, I really want to try that cotton candy waffle cone ice cream thing. (laughs) That just sounds so ridiculous to me. And if it's a hot day and you're watching a baseball game, like you're going to want the ice cream. And uh, that just sounds something like I'd be like, I just need to try that and see what the experience is like. I'm not sure I would like it, but. If it's a hot day, you'd love a bunch, a big messy wad of melting cotton candy and ice cream all over your fucking hands. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which of these would you least want to have? Is it just unanimously bull nuts at a baseball game? For sure, it's the bull nuts. So bull take, nuts, bull yeah. off, take bull nuts off the board, which is the one you'd least want to try. <sighs> The hot dog stuffed in pickles sounds really gross to me because I don't like pickles. I don't. I, don't, I wouldn't mind that one as much. For me, uh, that funnel cake sounds like a bit much. Yeah. Not sure I'd want to dig into that guy. You can share some of mine. For me, it's actually the tater tots. I know you guys will. I hate tater tots. I think they're disgusting. Wow. There's something Holy about them. I don't shit. know if it's the consistency. I know it's just a fried potato. I don't get it. That is a hot take. Sometimes you bite into a tater tot and it tastes kind of crunchy like the potatoes like kind of weird i don't know i don't like tater tots i have never met anyone that told me they didn't like tater tots it's like usually universally the best way to make a potato except for maybe french fries it's universally the best way to make a potato. <laughs> who doesn't love tater tots <laughs> well, i'm never sitting around Do the you like hash giving, you know? yeah i like it hey, look this makes no logical sense it's just a consistency and thing to me i just don't like them I realize they're essentially wow. a round hash brown. How are I love hash friends? Like the hash brown from McDonald's. No, because it's basically a tater tot. It is a tater tot. Yeah. I was trying to catch you. No, I, I knew where you were going. <laughs> no, I like I like a shredded hash brown. I don't like I just I don't get it. I don't I understand it makes no sense. I just don't like the taste. All right. I think it is universally agreed that the hash brown from McDonald's is the greasiest piece of food <laughs> known to mankind. That thing's horrible. It is pretty nasty disc of it's also like super salty maybe i just put salt on it i would honestly though if i had to order something off the mcdonald's breakfast i'd get the hash brown because (laughs) the egg i can't eat any of the egg from mcdonald's oh nothing with their eggs or the mcgriddles the mcgriddles are atrocious the spongy egg stuff i'll eat one just because i like the bacon so i'll just i'll just slam through it because i like the biscuit and i like the bacon but that spongy egg is pretty nasty all right, so that was our uh, segment. We will return to that at some point and uh, check out some other stadiums near you. But we've got one snack left, and it's the official bubblegum of Ripken Baseball, the Big League Chew. Now this, I'm shocked to hear that neither one of you guys had ever had Big League Chew. Never had Big League Chew, yeah. Never had it. That is insane to me. I've had big... It says since 1980, so I must have been on the f- forefront of Big League Chew because 
We used to eat this stuff constantly when I was a kid. I also played a ton of ball. So, and I think, you know, the reason that this thing got popular is when we were younger, when this came out in the eighties, ball players would have chew all the time. And this sort of resembles it, which makes it a weird kind of candy, Ooh. sort of like having a candy cigarette. You can put a, a wad in your mouth, but it's gum, and you can kind of look like or act like a base, baseball player who was using chew at the time. This thing looks so weird. They're just, like, thin and stringy. Yeah, there's a bunch of little strings. You gotta you pinch it, usually, take a big pinch of it, and then jab it in your mouth all at once. Now, do you put it under your lip and just spit out the juice after a while, like just like a baseball player? Sure. Wad it into the side of your mouth. This stuff smells. This baseball player on the cover looks like he has done many steroids <laughs> now his forearms are jacked this tastes exactly like bubble tape you guys remember bubble tape yep yep that's exactly what it tastes like it's amazingly soft too yeah you were talking about fondling the package how hard it was i know it felt like a big rock of gum but then when you broke it out it's not i love the smell this is a nostalgia factor here for me because I do love Big League Chew. Probably got to give it a minute to uh, really rate the a gum because you got to see what it delivers in the long is haul. Is this gum but... good for blowing bubbles? Sure is. It feels pretty soft. Is it going to stiffen up a little bit? Chad gave it a poor attempt at the bubble. Yeah, that was bad. What do you got, Geiger? Mine's still too soft. I got to harden it up. Did you guys ever had a, a gum called Bub's Daddy? Nope. That's another gum I had as a kid. Bub's Daddy? <laughs> no, I never had. <laughs> yeah. It's an odd sounding gum, but they also make different flavors of the big league chew, like a grape mm-hmm. and I feel like there's another one. A, a, a green apple, I believe. I saw the green apple at the store. Like at a weird store. It was like Menards or something. Yeah, that's the only place I find it is a hardware store. And this is actually where I got this. Do you guys so, chew a lot of gum? Nope. I don't chew a lot of gum. But if I if I do chew gum, I actually prefer to have the old like bubblicious or Me this too. kind of sugary gum. Like a big hunk of it. I don't I I don't chew like a trident and stuff like that. But generally, I would say I chew gum probably like once a month at most. I used to chew gum constantly as a kid. We always had gum. I mean, the kids on our bus would have like the big honking bubblicious pieces. And they we used to try to see how many we could fit in our mouth and still reasonably chew it. Like we get these giant, disgusting wads of gum. I don't do it as much anymore. I've been, I have a bad habit of biting my nails. So I've tried to like chew gum to take care of like the oral fixation of wanting to bite my nails. So invariably, I'll end up buying a bunch of packs of gum and chewing them and then going right back to bite nails. <laughs> Pull out Big League Chew in the middle of a sales meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I, mean, like, I usually do like the uh, Orbits because it's small and it's still pretty flavorful. But yeah, I like, hold on, guys. I got these novelty bag of child gum. <laughs> Stuff a big old wad of it in there. Okay, so tell me if this is weird. Mm-hmm. Probably going to be a yes. Just the way you phrase that. This is going to be weird as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to preface this. I don't believe in hypnotism. I don't believe in like that sort of stuff. Uh-huh. But I also used to chew my nails like crazy. And then I was in college, maybe like my junior year or something. I remember seeing this ad on TV and they were like, oh, do you bite your nails? Call up this number and will break you of your nail habit. And it wasn't even like a 900 number. Like, it was a free call. That sounds fishy. What <laughs> the <laughs> hell? Totally sketchy. Yeah. Real public <laughs> service they're doing. So I was like, all right, so I'll, I'll give this a shot. So I called him up, and the, it was a vo- the whole thing was a voice recording. It said, go into your room and turn off the lights. <laughs> Take your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> Snap a photo of your genitals and text it to <laughs> Now, if you ever bite your nails again, I'm going to send this photo to everyone you know. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And they're like, you know, just relax, get comfortable, blah, blah, blah. So I like lie down on my bed. And then the guy, he's like this older sounding guy. And he's, he says like, now, when I say the word disconnect, you will no longer want to bite your nails. And there's just like this quiet background kind of music. And then all of a sudden, just this buzzing. Bam! Disconnect. Bam! Disconnect. Bam! Disconnect. It's <laughs> like, was like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. And then he's like, I don't remember, but he was basically just like, okay, that's it. And then I stopped biting my nails. And <laughs> so it worked. Yeah. Well, okay. So I don't know if that worked or because I also said, okay, I don't want to bite my nails anymore. I'm going to make a conscious decision to stop biting my nails. So like, I don't know if it's because of the hypnotism thing, whatever it was, or because I specifically said, I'm going to stop biting my nails. And I just had that great willpower. So wait, we narrowed down the options to creepy late night hotline or willpower. 
<laughs> I wonder if that study is going to be happy to know that the only test subject they ever had was successful in stopping my nails. I tried to like look up the info like a couple years later, and then I couldn't. I couldn't find anything about it like on the internet. So I was like, did I dream this whole thing? Or... <laughs> <laughs> disconnect. <laughs> disconnect. <laughs> you ever bite your nails, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so some guy was like what is that a guy saying? <laughs> what was that actual No like? no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was an actual like buzzer sound. It was either that phone call or because that's exactly when you ripped off all your nails to try to look handicapped. <laughs> right, exactly. Why are you sitting there? You just hold up your hands. <laughs> no nails, bro. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. He's like, now when I say disconnect, you will rip off your nails one at a time and mail them to me in a package. <laughs> and I am in no way getting off on this sexual. <laughs> disconnect. <laughs> I won't be able to open the package because I've glued all of my victims' fingernails to my own nails. <laughs> so, yeah, to answer your question, that's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good. Glad we got to the bottom of that. <laughs> Although, if that would work, I would do it because I hate biting my nails. If you can find you can Start that up. Like, at yeah. the end of this podcast, stick around <laughs> after the song at the end in, in case you want to, like stop pulling your hair out or something when we say disconnect at the end of this podcast you will no longer fart <laughs> a terrible habit that's actually not good for you i don't think <laughs> all right so we got some gum to rate still um <laughs> here's the thing this gum is very good <laughs> that's the thing <laughs> that is the thing huh? i know that it's not great like it's super sugary yeah and it does taste a lot like bubble tape chad mentioned so if you haven't had this think of bubble tape it says it's only 10 calories though if you eat eight pieces but i think i shoved in at least 40 pieces so <laughs> wait eight strands is all you're supposed to have yeah eight strands is 10 cal- that's one serving is 10 calories look at that jacked up guy in the front he's having more than eight pieces so 200 calories for the whole bag which is more than your standard gum package but i enjoy it i think it's fun it's a fun way to eat gum as a kid i loved it i like the taste still it's fun fun to uh blow bubbles with and i like the entire entire experience of big league chew always have was a lot like i remember it i love big league chew i'm gonna give it a love dat wow yes geiger give me a wow Whoa! <laughs> Geiger, what do you think about this stuff? It's fine. I like gum. I don't like mint gum as much as other gums. This has that going for it. When I first smelled it, it smelled to me like that old, like, if you open a pack of baseball cards, and you had that, like, get wad of double bubble or that, like, old, hard, terrible tops gum. It kind of smelled like that, but it doesn't taste like that. It's got a good bubble gum flavor. You can ration as much as you like, which is handy. You can have a little piece of gum or a big piece of gum, depending on your mood. Yeah, it makes a good bubble. It's not too hard. I think sometimes gum is like too hard to chew and it just hurts your jaw and you can't blow it. Blow bubbles with it. I wouldn't say love it. I'd say like that. It's a solid like that. I like other gums a little better. I don't have this. I never had it before, so the nostalgia isn't there. But uh, it's a solid gum. So when you guys finish the sentence, six feet of bubble gum for you. Not them. them. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> if you are in our age group, you know that. When I opened this package up and smelled it, this isn't even bubble tape, but I smelled this, and the first thing that popped into my head was that song. <laughs> and now it's stuck in my head instead of the latest Ariana Grande song, which is what I had before. Anyway, moving on. You will not listen to Ariana Grande anymore. <laughs> Disconnect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. If I was a kid this would be fantastic. Like, I used to love bubble tape as a kid. This is actually, I think, even better because it's, like, easier to pick the amount that you want. So I wish I had known about this as a kid. I wish I had eaten it. It would have been fantastic. But I'm not a kid. I'm old as shit. So this is not something I'm ever going to eat again. It's fine. So I'm just going to give it an indifferent to that. All right. All around the scale here. So, But it is the winner this week. Is it? Is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's the only yep. one without a negative. Oh, yeah. Your love pushed it above the uh, Cracker Jack. By the skin of its teeth. I've, have we ever had a tie? I don't think we've ever had a tie. No. Maybe we have. 
I don't think so. So the Big League Chew is the winner, and this roided character on the front of the package is very happy about that. <laughs> so that will do it for our baseball episode. And just for a quick final question, you go to the ballpark. It's going to be your last baseball game you attend. What do you make sure you eat you, at, at any given ballpark? Grasshoppers. <laughs> <laughs> Whether toasted or just right from on. the grass. <laughs> I'm on the, I'd like to tailgate. I'll bring my own. I would want to have a brat for sure. I think that's just the classic for me, the classic ballpark thing. I know people would say hot dog, but I'll take a brat over a hot dog any day. For me, it's just like, yeah, the classic brat and then some fries to go along with that and then... Uh, like a hot chocolate if it's a little bit colder day, something like that. Just your standard french fries and hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Another old day at the ballpark. Uh, they, they, I, that's a common thing. At AT&T Park, they have guys that walk around with huge backpacks on full of hot chocolate. And they just walk up to your seat and pull out a cup and spray it out of the backpack into the cup for you. And you get it. And it's perfect because it's cold as shit here in San Francisco all the time. I'll just get a glass of cold milk and a bowl full of beef stew. No, uh... <laughs> Probably, I probably, I, like I said, I love ballpark nachos, even the really crappy ones. So I'd probably just get some nachos with the little like pickled jalapenos on the side and a beer. I, uh, I'm always a hot dog and a soft pretzel. Oh yeah, the pretzel. Always with the soft pretzel. Real quickly before we go, um, if you disagree with whatever we said, you're also nostalgic for bubble tape or any of the bubble related products of your youth. You want to suggest a food, something like that. You can uh, reach out to us at you try that at gmail.com. Visit us on Twitter at you tried that, Facebook you tried that, Instagram you tried that, YouTube run as you tried that, and we are also on catfancy.com under the uh, sub thread you tried that. Meow. <laughs> 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 All right, that'll do it for our baseball themed episode. We'll catch you next time where we will be trying three brand new snacks. Deuces. Yep. Disconnect. Disconnect. Disconnect.